Hello and welcome back to the Intro to Biopsych webinar series. Last time, we took a look at genes and transcription units. This time, we're going to take a look at pathways. Pathways in the Biopsych database collection are, are conceptual units of thinking about how metabolism works and sometimes how regulatory relationships work. Uh, we like to keep them from growing too large because pathways up to a certain size are easier to think about and much better for predictive purposes. But you don't have to worry about that too much when you're just thinking about how you're going to find and use pathways. So let's go to the pathway search. And let's look for threonine. Oh, and we have options. Let's go for biosynthesis. Here we are, the pathway page for threonine biosynthesis. So what's in a pathway page? Again, the organism at the top, the name of the pathway, and an overall evidence code for the whole pathway. That is to say, how do we know this pathway is in this organism? And again, we have several direct assays have been used to demonstrate the presence of this pathway. I could click on this to bring it up in more detail, and I could click on one of these papers to actually go to the paper. But let's just get rid of that for now. So a pathway page focuses on a schematic representation of the pathway, which you see right here. Right away, we see reactions and intermediates. Intermediate, reaction, intermediate, reaction, and so forth. Everything in here can be clicked on. I can click on a compound, I can click on an enzyme, I can click on a reaction. In the first reaction here, we have the conversion of oxaloacetate to L-aspartate. At each reaction step, we have the name of the reaction, an EC number if possible, the name of the enzyme, and the gene, or in this case genes, coding for the relevant enzyme or enzymes. We also show regulation, including regulation that's internal to the pathway, like feedback inhibition by threonine. And you can actually mouse over one of these little regulation pluses or minuses to see what it's talking about. In this case, we know that THRA, the enzyme whose gene we were looking at earlier, is inhibited by L-threonine, and its gene expression is repressed by both threonine and isoleucine levels. That's the attenuation we saw earlier. All that in that little minus. And again, we can see feedback regulation of the pathway from its pathway product, threonine, here. We can zoom in and out of a metabolic pathway. So for example, if we zoom out once, clicking less detail, now we have this sort of higher level view of the pathway where we've lost all of the compounds that are on the sides of the reactions. This is more of a even more schematic view of the reaction, and it focuses on things like, how does the regulation work? It's threonine back to this point, and back to this point. Now, if we were to take more detail instead, and then do it again, you'd see that now we have structures for the pathway intermediates. So you can actually see what kind of structural changes the pathway is enacting on its uh, primary focus compounds as they go through the pathway. Over here on the right, we also have this cross-species comparison button. We're not going to touch this in this introductory webinar series, but in the future comparison and omics tools webinar series, we'll take a look at how you can compare pathways across multiple organisms. Moving on down the page, we have this, which shows where genes for this pathway are mapped onto the genome. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we have, again, a genetic regulation schematic. Now, I mentioned before, we have more and less complex gene regulation schematics. In this case, we're going to get a gene regulation schematic that addresses every gene in the pathway that has some form of genetic regulation. So again, we have the THRA operon, and we have its regulation by attenuation. And we have MET-L, which is regulated positively by FOP, negatively by MET-J, and then MET-J is, neg is negatively regulated by FER, 
which is positively regula regulated by SOX S and so on, all the way up the chain. In this way, you get an at-a-glance view of the overall regulation of the entire metabolic pathway at the genetic level. Continuing on down the page, we have classification information for the pathway, and we have a pathway summary. And these can be, this is more of a brief one, there are longer ones. The pathway summary gives you the context for the metabolic pathway, what its role is in the cell, and a little bit of explanation, and sometimes citations. Then down at the bottom, we have crediting. And I'll take a moment to talk about crediting. We credit when the pathway was created, and we credit when it was last curated. And again, there's that green question mark space so you can go through for more information if you forget what this means. But the basic point here is that this says the last date on which this pathway was completely revised. So it shouldn't actually be missing literature older than that date. And it kind of gives you a firm grasp on the guaranteed up-to-dateness, if you will, of the pathway. And in this case, we see that I last curated this in May of last year. Then down at the bottom, we once again have references for the page itself, and then other references collected from the genes, enzymes, subpathways, and substrates of the pathway. So you have kind of this body of literature related to the whole pathway collected on the pathway page. So now that we've talked about what a metabolic pathway looks like in BioPsych and how to maneuver around a pathway page, it's time to move on to proteins. So come back with me in the next part of this webinar series where we'll look at what's in a protein page.